Jim Coyle with you, joined, of course, by Dustin Schutte in studio, and Dylan Sin now from the Fort Wayne Journal-Gazette. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Always glad to be on, Jim. Always glad to have you. Um, yesterday, Kyle Nedenrip was with us from the Indy Star, and, and actually, he has a piece today, which he teased yesterday. Um, we were talking about Kanan Catchings, a current Purdue commit that had announced that he was going to leave Brownsburg High School and, and head down to um, Overtime Elite to prepare himself for an NBA career. And and he is he is one that you'd say that ah, he's probably making the right decision because this guy has NBA potential. Um, so, and after watching what J uh, Jalen Hachifino has done, and that is prepare himself to be a professional athlete for years ahead of the fact, it's probably a good move for him. It stinks to see good Indiana talent leaving the state uh, before they're done playing high school. Now, Jalen Harrelson, it was announced, um, that he is going to be leaving Fisher's High School and going to Lalo Muir. At least he's staying in state at Lalu up north there, closer to you. But uh, both of these guys will not be eligible for Indiana Mr. Basketball, um, Indiana All-Stars, which it's kind of sad in that regard. Um, and I still wonder if they should be included in some form because they're still playing the same sport just at a higher level is all. Yeah. And, and I, I, I guess I understand that. I, I think the idea is that they're not playing the same teams as everyone else, right? You're comparing. Yeah. They're sports, playing harder right? teams. That's the funny thing is their, their schedule right. is much, much harder. Right. But, and they're, they're, they also have different teammates, right? Like they're, uh, I mean, especially Cannon Catchings is going to go down. He's, he's going to be playing his games in Atlanta. Um, so he's not, I, I can't imagine how you would kind of make that determination and, and it, it would be pretty difficult to do that. Um, I, I it's, it's the idea of if you're playing against the teams from the state that everyone else plays against, right? And so it, it's kind of, you're comparing apples to apples. How do you compare a guy who averages like nine points a game at La Lumiere, La Lumiere as their fourth best scorer to a guy who is the best player on um, I, I don't know, um, Hamilton Southeastern, right? It's, it's, it's apples to oranges. And I think that's why they do it. Not, not because the, those players aren't worthy, but because it, it's hard to compare. And so I think that, that it, it just makes the voting easier. It makes the, it, it's a hard and fast criteria, which I don't really have a problem with. I, I know a lot of these guys, they, uh, they really want to win Mr. Basketball. I remember it was the same kind of thing up here. We had Keon Brooks. Several years ago, he was a, a Fort Wayne guy who um, transferred for his final season uh, from Northside to an academy in, in La Lumiere. Um, and that that was one of the few but things. Worst, that was, he went to some school outside of the state and you never heard from him again. That's right. We we, we never heard from him again. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but no, he and I remember when he decided to transfer one of the things he said was it was a really tough decision because I really wanted to win Mr. Basketball and I wanted to win a state championship at, in, uh, at for Northside. Um, and those are things that, that are, those are kind of carrots that are keeping these guys in the IHSAA. And so um, it, it's something that they consider and, and those things still have prestige, which is good to see. Um, and, and so it, 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 it'd be tough to, make them eligible even outside of the IHSAA framework. I mean, Mr. Indiana, Mr. Basketball has, is, is the, to me, of course, uh, I'm going to sound a little biased, but it's, it's the most prestigious of all the Mr. Basketballs that there are. Yeah. Period. I mean, it's the first one, right? Like it, it, we, we were the one. First, that did it first, but right? Not only that, look at the names who have achieved it more and more importantly, the names who didn't achieve it like Larry Bird, or names like that that didn't win that award that you're like, wow. Uh, Mike Woodson. Mike Woodson's another one. Yeah, because there, there, there were so many 
the, the, the it's it's unbelievable the, the level of talent when you go back. If people were to go back and seriously look at it, Mr. Basketball in Indiana from uh, 50s, specifically the 60s on, when you've got guys like, well, Woodson was just a little later than that, but um, oh my gosh, who is uh, the, the, the all time great that only played two years at Indiana? Uh, played for the Pacers. George McGinnis. George McGinnis. I mean, holy cow. You start with that level of talent, and then it just keeps going. Uh, year after year after year, you're talking guys that, that played for all these different schools, and it happens every year with the state of Indiana. And that's not always the case. This is going to be great news for the Kentucky All-Stars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they 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 win like once every. What how what's something comes around um, Haley's Comet? How often does that come around? Good. I, I don't know how how often Haley's Comet. The the, um, the expression that I've heard most often is uh, "once in a blue moon." There you go. As in blue moon of Kentucky. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, perfect. But um, but yeah, you just hate to see it. But you know, it is what it is. Um, more importantly, with Kane and Catchings, and that's more on your wheelhouse, he's a Purdue commitment. Yeah. But there has been just nonstop chatter with him, it seems, for a while in regards to his commitment, which it may just be wishful thinking by people. It may just be smoke. But I, I'm i going to be hard-pressed to think that he ends up in West Lafayette. Yeah, there have been signs and kind of, as you said, smoke, I think is the right way to put it, um, about him going elsewhere um, over the last uh, over the last uh, several months here, right? Remember, there was a there was a couple of days there that all of uh, basically all of Indiana Twitter uh, had a, had a, a meltdown because they thought he was decommitting and committing to IU. Uh, imminently, right? That was that was a thing that was that came across Twitter and didn't materialize because that's just kind of what happens sometimes. But uh, that was a rumor for several for several hours there. Um, but no, it, it, it's it, it, it's interesting because basically the way that the Indy Star story was written was that he's been offered by many of these basketball academies to come play for them for his senior year, and he hadn't really been interested in any of them um, until Overtime Elite came along. Uh, he visited. He really liked the facility, and he said, "Look, this this is going to get me. This is going to make me a better player for when I get to Purdue." Um, now the question is: Now, if he plays a year at Overtime Elite, and he he likes playing for Overtime Elite, and realizes why would I leave here? Why wouldn't I just play another year and then go straight to the NBA? Um, that's certainly a possibility. I, I, I think. Um, I, I think. I don't. I, I'm, I'm sure Purdue understands that, and. Uh, and so they they now have to be a little bit worried that he'll he'll have a really good experience his first year at Overtime Elite and end up staying there and just moving right on to the NBA. That doesn't seem to be the plan right now, um, but obviously plans can change as we've seen already with him transferring there. So uh, I, I think that that's a real possibility. And if I were Matt Painter, you obviously hope that he sticks around and you keep you keep recruiting him and you keep making sure that he's doing as well as he can. Um, but you probably start having some backup plans in the in the 2024 recruiting class would be my guess. Well, Dustin uh, and Dylan, I, I wasn't thinking of that, and that is a definite possibility. That's not – I was thinking other schools. I, I just think that he's been c committed to Purdue for so long, and um, it, it, there's it's changed. It, it's, yeah. Things have just changed so much in so many ways. And I, I I can't say that I have great familiarity with the success or failure of Purdue's NIL situation. Um, I, I'm sure it'll be great when Zach Eady leaves. Um, there's a chunk there, but I, I don't know that it's set up to where others are, number one. But number two, they're not winning on a national level. And I, I do think that guys like, Canaan, they, they want to play a year. They want to play a year of college, at least one. They want that taste uh, of college. And, and whether it's playing for a Purdue or Indiana or whomever, man, that's – that's you can't get that at Overtime Elite. You can't get that at IMG. You can't get that at Montverde. You can't get what they can get there. That's 
that's something they're not going to get in the NBA even. This this one or two years of playing for a school where you have fans that are just foaming at the mouth, uh, especially if you're at a basketball school like Indiana or Purdue, they they want that, I think, at least to experience it. So uh, I'm going to be surprised if he goes that route, although it's, like I said, I don't disagree with it. It's a great option that I didn't even consider. But I, I think he ends up going someplace. But now, with it, if it ends up only being a year or two, uh, does it matter where really? Um, you know, is it if it's Indiana, if it's Purdue, if it's UCLA, who knows? Uh, so that's going to make such a change. But I, I think that he, I just don't think he ends up in West Lafayette for a year for a couple of reasons. Number one, Purdue does not show a penchant for producing NBA talent. That's another thing that has to show up to me, I, I think. I mean, I mean, I, the, the thing with Purdue is that they don't generally, they're not. They're not a one-and-done school, generally. That's not how they do it. But when they have guys who are NBA talent, which they have had a couple times in the last several years, they, they, they develop them, right? They're not a they're not a school that takes one-and-done guys and turns them into four-year players. That's not really how it works. I mean, um, Jaden Ivey came in and was immediately a star, and he it was obvious that he was a star, and he was gone in two years because he – and he was the number five overall pick, right? The, like Purdue, it's not that Purdue doesn't produce, produce NBA players because they are not developing players. It's because they don't get guys in who are expecting to be NBA players within a year or two, right? Now, um, they they did the same thing with Caleb Swanigan, right? Where it was, they got him, they had him for two years. He was terrific. He went on to the NBA as a first round pick, right? Um, so when they have guys who have that kind of talent, they've shown the ability to put them in the league. Uh, they just don't get guys with that kind of um, ceiling for the NBA specifically uh, on a on a very regular basis. Now, uh, Canning Catchings is a little bit interesting because I don't think uh, you 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 can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that when he committed, he was not the type of five star that you expected to be a one and done. No, right? I, I think that that's more of a recent development for him. And that's another um, reason why I don't think he ends up in West Lafayette. His status has risen so much. His right. options have risen so much. And that's going to give him – the fact that he's doing this alone, going to overtime elite, shows that, okay, I see the the possibilities that I have now, and I need to take care of those. I, I keep using Jalen Huchifino as an example but because it's, it's a great example. You know, he was he was preparing to be a professional – before, long before he got to the NBA, um, you know, with, with his with his eating regimen, his diet, his his workout, uh, just how he committed himself, uh, learning of what it truly means to be a professional and treat it like a job. And I think that that's one of the things that you don't learn that in high school. Um, you learn commitment and, and a lot of other things, but there are a lot. There are just so many things that these places offer that. Uh, that you're just not going to get in high school. And these guys, I said it yesterday. I get it. They are. This is. They have that type of potential. So it's. It would be like if someone uh, comes along in an academic setting, and you're going to just continue to raise them up in the level of classes that they can take because they can take it because they can do it. So you want to find out well where is their their ceiling right now, so we can push. Through that ceiling, and that's exactly what uh, he's doing here, and, and I I agree with it. It just it stinks on how it has to happen, but it's 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 a different world. Yeah, he he's he's doing what he believes is best for himself, right? And, and I and you can you can't really ask for anything else from these guys. Um, and, and that's and Purdue now has to basically re-recruit him over the next year, right? It, it's it's um and, and from now until until signing day. Um, of the 2024 class, they have to basically say, all right, yeah, you're committed. And, and this is true of a lot of recruits, right? Uh, we know that verbal commitments, even in basketball, where there are fewer of them, verbal commitments are not gospel, right? You, there are decommitments, there are recommitments, there are, there are changes all the time, right up until signing day and sometimes even after, as we saw with uh, like Mackenzie and Baco, right? Um, so you're, you're constantly need to re-recruit your own guys. Uh, and that's a huge part of a coach's job. And it's going to be even more heightened for uh, for Kane and Catchings, just because he is one of the best recruits Purdue has had in several years, 
Um, and, and it would be a shame for them to lose him because he is the type of player they need, right? We talked, we've talked for, for, for a year and a half now about how they need more athleticism on the wing. Cannon Catchings is the type of guy who has athleticism on the wing. He's exactly the type of player they need to get in the program to really take that next step into truly national contention. Um, and, and so they're going to, they would, they would love to keep him over the next year here.